Hi, my name's Jason, and today I'm going to show you how I made this coffee table on Modern Ideations. To start things off, I'm going to be cutting diagonally from one of the edges to give it a parallelogram shape. And make sure that your blade is set to go all the way through, unlike myself. For the other side, I'm just repeating the same process to complete the parallelogram shape. And now I have two identical pieces, one for the top and bottom of the table. I'm making a line for the groove for the glass to be seated in. I'm setting my circular saw to the appropriate cutting depth. Just a light groove for the plexiglass to slide into place after. I'm repeating the same process for the top piece, and if you cut the groove down the middle, it should align. Now for the main support, I'm just cutting out another parallelogram shape. <sighs> I'm sorry, I got a little bit sidetracked. I'm from Georgia, and we just had a freak snowstorm, so I couldn't help myself but play in the snow at least a little bit before it all melted. And it's been a while since I'd seen any. Once I'd finally got back on track, I decided to make the table support. And once that was finished, we now have all the pieces for the coffee table. I'm chasing around the main support so I can cut out a groove for the support to be seated in. And now I'm making several passes with the circular saw to make a way. I made it a pretty tight fit so it would have as much strength as possible. Now I'm just going back over it with a chisel to clean it up a little bit. I'm finding the midpoints for the other support and then repeating the same process to make the groove. And as you can see, the second support no longer fits, so we're just going to have to shape its size. I used an angle finder to find the angle, or you could just use Pythagorean Theorem. Or easier still, use an aggressive sandpaper and sand it to size. It takes a little bit more time, but it works. As long as you make sure to not over sand it. And after test fitting it a couple of times, it should fit perfectly. Now I'm taking the distance between the top and the bottom of the table so that I can have the distance for the plexiglass to slide in. I'm also taking into account the depth of the grooves that I cut earlier for the glass. 
and now I'm using a marker to mark the lines on the plexiglass. I'm using a plexiglass knife to score the surface before breaking it, but you could also use a basic razor blade or anything sharp enough to score the surface. Just make sure you make enough passes before breaking it or else it won't snap evenly. You'll see an example of that in a minute. Since this cut was so close to the edge, I couldn't get the proper leverage to snap it. No worries though, I just went back and cleaned up the cut. I checked to see if the plexiglass could slide smoothly in the groove. Unfortunately it couldn't, since I'd only made one pass with the circular saw. So I just used the knife and carved out the groove until the glass could slide smoothly. And then I just trimmed off the ends of the tabletop and bottom. And then I started pre-drilling the holes before putting in the screws. I drilled down the center of the groove first and then drilled up into the support to make sure that I wouldn't miss. I countersunk it and then followed up with screws. And then I repeated the same process for the top. For the tabletop, I made sure to make the countersinks extra deep. That way, when I come back with the screws, the screw heads will sit well beneath the surface. And that'll make my life a little bit easier when I come back and fill the holes. That way, no screw heads will be sticking out. I'm also applying wood glue for some extra strength. And now, we're basically finished. All we need to do is the paint and prep work, and that's it. I'm once again overfilling the screw holes so that I can come back and sand it flat. Once everything's ready to be painted, I'm coming back with a semi-wet rag and cleaning up the dust particles. And then moving on to primer, and then paint, and then a clear coat, making sure to let each coat dry. Slide in the plexiglass and remove the protective covering, and that's it. Overall, I'm happy with how this project came out, but there are some things that I'll change. Like for example, the paint. This chrome paint was a little bit finicky, but once I sealed it with the protective coating, it was all good. So let me know what you think about this project, or about future projects you would want to see. Make sure you comment and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the upcoming projects. And I'll see you next time on Modern Ideations.